this past weekend, Mamelodi Sundowns completed their domestic treble after winning the Netbank Cup with a victory over Marumo Galance in that final on Saturday. And uh, I mean, just to take a look at the team and how they did this season, I'm just going to ask the social media just to put it up uh, over there. As we know that they've won the MTN8 uh, Netbank Cup with the DSTV Premiership uh, champions. And... Um, also, their biggest goal difference in a PSL season with 36 goals. They finished uh, season 16 points ahead of uh, second place Cape Town City. Only two teams in the PSL era have won a domestic treble, which is uh, Orlando Pirates and Sundowns. And uh, obviously that golden boot going to Peter Shalulile. Now they have uh, lost just four matches the whole season and they've collected 13 million rand in winning the treble and an additional 10 million for reaching the last eight in the CAF Champions League. However, same as the club, there are players in the team who have personal accolades and uh, it is uh, the same with... Uh, goalkeeper Dennis Oyango and uh, he's now the league's most successful player. He is uh, the first player to win nine South African League winners medal. Dennis, thank you so much for uh, coming through. Welcome to the show this morning. Nine league titles. Does it feel the same every single time you win? <laughs> good morning to the viewers and thanks for having me. Um, it's always good to win the league. Uh, it's our bread and butter because it gives us an opportunity to play again in the Champions League and, mm -hmm. uh, of course, dominate uh, the domestic league. But, yeah, it feels the same. I mean, uh, it's a league trophy. Everyone would, would love to, to have a league trophy or win the league title because that's what we play for. Uh, we play to win trophies and titles. So, for me, every league title means a lot to me. I mean, right now, you are the most successful in the league. Does it go at the back of your mind every time a new season starts that there's a potential that you might be making history? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, when I'm at a club like Sundowns where the ambitions are high, you always look to win trophies uh, in the league because if, if, if you don't win, it becomes a different uh, a challenge altogether. Mm -hmm. But every time we get on the pitch, we give our best and uh, the league comes to our heads first because... As I said, it's uh, our bread and butter. So when you're at a club like Sundown, you, you, you're expected to win. Mm -hmm. And the pressure comes with, the, with a lot of hard work and commitment all the time. I mean, the coaches, they're always vocal and they were vocal saying that, listen, we want to complete the treble this season. And it's a big thing for the coaches. But from the player's point of view, it's nice winning the league. But a treble? It's always nice to win every trophy. Um, make history and uh, show at the end of the day what you've been working for. Mm -hmm. And for us, I think the MTN8 has been a little bit of a challenge for us for a couple of years. And the moment we bugged in the MTN8, we knew that it's possible. We can go for the other two. Of course, we came short in the Champions League, mm -hmm. uh, which was the target. We otherwise, we would be on four trophies this season. But uh, hopefully next season, we go two more steps in the Champions League and... And keep winning because um, we are paid to win mm -hmm. and we, we need to deliver the trophies at the end of the day. I mean, you saying that there's new goals the next season, but just looking at a club like Mamelodi Sundowns who are winning year in, year out, how do the coaches try to keep you as the players motivate, motivated every season? Um, the coaches don't need to motivate us. Um, we are the club which has a lot of ambitions and uh, we have to give our best all the time because we know that uh, our rivals are also doing the homework and they're giving their best. But if we work a little bit harder than them and focus on ourselves and uh, give back to the club because the club makes sure that uh, we are in a very comfortable position and mm -hmm. we have no issues around us to distract us. So we, we have to give the best to the club and see how far we can go because at the end of the day we, we have to to give our, our report that, uh, at the end of the season that this is what we've won. What do the coaches then say to you guys after this big win and claiming the, the treble that they've won? <laughs> of course we, we have to make time for our families now because during the season it's very difficult. In my house they only see me probably twice or three times a week. 
So we, we must make time for them and go have a breather because we know it's going to be harder next season mm -hmm. and they're going to ask more from us. So uh, we, 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 we must move away from football a little bit uh, when we close and uh, try and uh, freshen up our minds and recover and, and try and also have fun because when we are in the season, we, we, we don't have time for fun. Mm -hmm. We are always on the pitch or doing corrections or watching the opponent. So football becomes our life uh, full time when the season is on. I mean, for you personally, you've achieved almost anything that a player would want to achieve in their career. But here now, after winning a travel, what would you want to achieve moving forward? <laughs> Probably double travel. <laughs> <laughs> double travel, but it's always good to make history, especially in football. and. Um, I think it always also inspires youngsters out there that they can make it because sometimes we doubt ourselves that no man I can't make it but if you look at someone and his journey and see how far he has come or she has come in terms of achievements you get inspired also as a youngster so we, we need to inspire the young ones and make sure that uh, they learn and be competitive also mm -hmm. because you might find people who think that it's always given no you must work for it so the more we work and get uh, these records being broken and uh, uh, win more, the more it inspires the young ones. Let's just zoom in a bit into your story personally. I mean, uh, a lot of articles, they say, uh, you know, you have helped inspire the team into winning the treble right now. But I know that you started off as a striker <laughs> and you did well. And then you moving over to being a goalkeeper. How did that transition happen? It's the people that were around me. They saw more potential in me as a goalkeeper, uh, more than a, a striker. Because we, as, as young ones, we always start somewhere and trying to look our feet to check where we are, what we want to do in future, where we want to play. Mm -hmm. But for the people that were around me, saw more talent in me as a goalkeeper. And uh, it pushed me all the way from, from school football to where I am right now. because. Uh, football paid for my school fees at school mm -hmm. and it has looked after me all the way and that's goalkeeping and of course uh, helping the club right now has been more of a brotherly thing because the goalkeeping department at Sundown is, is unbelievable because when when I feel that I can't make it for the next team for the next game I, I try and speak to the other goalkeepers and say look guys I'm not feeling well uh, please fill in and do the job for the club and we are always like brothers. Whoever plays must give his best because he's representing the other three goalkeepers. So it gives us a very good and fair competition in the team and it pushes us because we have two very senior goalkeepers at the club, me and Kennedy, and we have to also look at way, um, uh, Riyad Peterson and, and, uh, and Ricardo Goss. Yeah. So we, we need to show them that things are, din are done this way because we've been at the club for a very long time. So they, they look at us and we look at them and we inspire each other. At what age did you do that switch? And does age really have a bearing in terms of how well you're going to do in terms of starting to training to be that great goalkeeper down the line in your career? Uh, I don't think it's all about the age. It's all about having the right person to, to coach you and show you the way forward. Because sometimes you play football for fun, but if you have someone who gives you a bigger vision and he shows you that you can become a better goalkeeper even if you're 17, 18, because I, I started playing for the national team when I was 18. So I had the right people around me that showed me that football can change your life and start looking into making it your professional job. So people must al always look at helping the young ones mm -hmm. to make them believe that it's possible even when you're young. But even if, when, when you are clocking 30, sometimes they say goalkeepers age as fine wine and uh, it becomes more interesting when you get older and you, you know the game better. But you can also start when you're young and become a better goalkeeper. What do you think then about the standard of goalkeeping in the country? At the moment, I think uh, we, we need more goalkeepers in the country, um, have more goalkeeping academies and... And we, we need to inspire people to love goalkeeping, mm -hmm. kids to love goalkeeping because everyone wants to be a Messi, a Ronaldo. But 
you can as well be a Dennis Onyango, a Kennedy Mwene by, by doing your job and become who you want to be because I, I want the African football of their best in Africa as a goalkeeper, so why not? Another youngster can do the same, so we need to encourage them and make them aware that you can win things even when you're a goalkeeper. What makes a brilliant goalkeeper? Hard work. Hard work and, of course, uh, commitment because goalkeeper training is very difficult. Uh, you, you have to be on the ground all the time and every mistake they look at you and criticize you. But you need to move on. Uh, if you feel sorry for yourself, that will be the end of you. And goalkeeping is very delicate because you are alone in the net. You've got no one to help you. So you need to be very much determined and focused to be a goalkeeper. I mean, just looking at the team as a whole, usually they say if you want to know a, a coach's good is if when he comes in, he's either able to maintain the standard of um, the team or take it to the next level. And I'm just looking at Sundown since Amangoba um, Mnguti and Rulani and uh, Steve Compella taking over from Pito Musimani. They have literally taken the standard to the next level. What do you think they are doing right as coaches? Uh, every team has to improve season in, season out. If, if a team doesn't improve, which means the technical team and probably the management is not helping the players and, uh, and the, 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 the coaching staff to improve. But at Sanon, I think we are privileged that we have the three coaches plus the goalkeeper coach who most of us help us as, as fathers, because it's a family at Sundown, and uh, if you do not be, be behave as a family, you, you will never uh, achieve, because mm -hmm. we work hard for each other, you, we fill in for each other, we, we cover ourselves up. When, when I have a problem, someone comes and covers, uh, covers me up, and uh, that's what the coaches do mostly. They, they encourage us, and they, they give us the, the whole picture of football and, of course, life in general. So it's not only about football at Sundown. It's more of how you, 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 you put yourself out there to the community. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's more of a family thing than, than football. So football comes in after mm -hmm. the hard work. And the hard work comes in when you run together, work together. So we, we do the housework first, then we do the family things and the football things after. I mean, for a team that always wins, um, a lot of people tend to ask, like, does it feel like a disappointment when you guys actually get defeated um, because you guys are so used to winning so much um, that when you get, I mean, we're looking, I was looking at the stats earlier on in terms of you guys just only losing four times. Do you just look at it as, you know, let's just try to get a win next time or... Is it as disappointing as all these other teams when they lose? It's more than disappointing. Uh, at Sanan, when we draw, it's, it's a disaster. A draw on, on its own, we, we feel like it's a loss. So the, the culture and the mentality is for players to believe that they can win every game. Of course, we won't win all the games because there are other teams in the league and they're also as competitive as we are. But we need to create a, a culture at the club that... We don't lose because it's, it's a competitive sport and we know that at some point we lose. But if you have a losing mentality in your, in your brain, you, you're going to lose. But if the culture says we don't, we don't lose, we don't draw, we win, uh, when, whenever you step on the pitch, you, you have to give your best and we, 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 we channel it to the young ones in, in the academy. And, of course, the ladies' team. You saw the ladies' yeah. team coming up as winners of the CAF Women's Champions League. And it's the mentality of the club. So losing is not one of our options, but it happens sometimes and we move on and we, 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 we grind results in the, next, in the next game. What is the relationship that you guys have with the women's team? Um, do they sometimes come to you guys for advice? Uh, a few. Uh, of course, as goalkeepers, we do talk to... The, the ladies' team uh, and the lady Lamini, because she's very friendly with us and uh, we share ideas. And of course, uh, the FU also ladies who have a good relationship with infield players and they speak. And you know, you always learn, and uh, you can never get tired of learning. And a few things we learn from them because they challenge us. When they win, we must win because we're the senior team. But 
they also look up to us and say, look, if the senior team is doing it, we can do it. And uh, the same applies to the, to the academy boys and the MDC team. Well, Dennis, unfortunately, we have run out of time. I do know that you guys have a trophy tour that's happening on Wednesday. It's something that hasn't happened in a while. I mean, it must feel great when you're out there and just showcasing that trophy to your fans. Yes, we have a trophy parade on Wednesday uh, around Pretoria because uh, we've missed the supporters uh, and uh, they've missed celebrating with us these few years that we've been in, in, in the lockdown and having COVID around us. But uh, it's always good to celebrate with the, with the supporters. Hopefully the ladies will also have their bus to show them the, 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 the Ch Champions League trophy that they won, they won a, few, a few years back. But it's always good to be out there with the supporters and good to have them back. Well, thank you very much uh, for your time. We'll definitely be uh, covering that uh, trophy tour that is happening on Wednesday in Pretoria. Dennis Oyango, the goalkeeper of Mamelodi Sundowns.